good morning. It's so good to see you in the house of the Lord. Stand to your feet, if you will. Let's enter into his presence with the heart of thanksgiving. David said, Psalm 34, verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Heavenly Father, it's good to be in your presence today. We are here for you. We're here to lift up and exalt your name. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him.
place, Jesus. Because our God is greater. Our God is stronger than anything that we face. Our God is a miracle working God. Hallelujah. We give you glory in this place right now. I want you to lift up your hands and just begin to worship the God that is on your side. The God who is fighting for you. The God who is making a way where there is no way. The God that is victorious. Hallelujah. The God that removes the mountain when you speak to it. God, I thank you, Lord, that our God is great. Yeah. Yes, Jesus, we serve a God of victory. Water you turn into 
He's always been faithful. He's always been for you. Even when we're not faithful, he's faithful. He's an ever-present help in time of trouble. He's our defense. He goes before us and he makes a way where there seems to be no way. We serve a God of power, a God of might, a God of impossibles. God, I thank you, Lord, that there is nothing that is too hard for you today. God, you are healer. You are deliverer. You are savior. You are redeemer. You are king. We worship you in this place. Somebody worship you. You are great and greatly to be praised. Jesus. Sing all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing.
Get the revelation. Sorry. You're good. That it's your breath in our lungs. You know, I believe in Psalms 150, verse 6, it says, Let everything that hath breath. The reason why he said that is he knew because it's his breath. And his breath praises him back. <laughs> Can you just imagine the breath that is in your lungs? It's not just ordinary air. It's the breath of God breathing worship back to the throne. <laughs> as he breathes life in you, worship goes back to him. As he breathes life in you, worship goes back to him. He breathes life, worship goes back. We thank you. Yeah. 
how great you are and we are responding to your love the oceans are rising rising and falling at your word and we are responding to Heavens are telling, telling the earth how great you are. And we are responding to your love. The oceans are rising, rising and falling. Your word, we are responding to your love. My God, how great you are, how great, how great you
God, we sing of your greatness. God, we proclaim that you're a great and miracle-working God. Lord, I thank you that the word promises, God, that your ear is not too busy. And that your arm is not too short that you can't reach down. And God, I thank you this morning, God, as we stand here, Lord, in the midst of our prayer and fasting and our time of, Lord, of personal sacrifice, God. Lord, I thank you that you're a God who honors our sacrifice, God. Lord, and we recognize your greatness, God. How great, how great you are. My God, how great you are. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. Then sings my soul. He's a great and awesome God. How great Thou art. my soul. Just tell him with your own mouth right now how great he is to you. How great he is to you and to your life. How you can't make it without him. Can't even walk without you holding my hand, Jesus. You're great, Jesus. You're great, God. Let's just continue in this atmosphere of worship this morning. God is so faithful. He's so good. I want to share a scripture the Lord laid on my heart today in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It's a familiar scripture to us. But I want to share it in the Passion Translation. And it says, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day. How many of you know that's, that's what we're doing these 21 days? It says to be saturated in prayer throughout each day offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell Him every detail of your life. And then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And right now we can just feel the presence of the long the Lord so strongly in this place and we can feel the peace of God and this morning I want to speak to those of you that are here today and you may have been dealing with anxiety and anxious thoughts and the Lord wants you to know today that you do not have anything to be anxious about that he wants to fill you with his peace it says the peace of God that transcends all understanding it's whenever you may feel like you're facing every coming against you but yet you still have a peace because it's a peace that doesn't even make sense because all this is going on but today the Lord wants to give you his peace amen whatever you're facing whatever it is it says here to just give over everything that worries you what every little detail of your life just make it known to him and receive that peace today 
So, Lord, we just thank you right now for the peace of God. I thank you, Lord, that if there's anyone in this place that is dealing with anxiety or anxious thoughts, we speak to that anxiety. It has to go in Jesus' name. And we speak peace over every person, peace of mind in Jesus' name. The enemy cannot come against our minds any longer, but the peace of God that transcends all understanding is going to guard our heart and our mind through Christ Jesus, right? Right now, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Can we give the Lord a shout of praise this morning? Amen. Isn't he so good? Amen. Will you may greet someone before you have a seat. Let them know how good it is to see them in the house of the Lord. So great to see all of you here. We had a little bit of weather on the way here to uh, church this morning. But look at everyone smiling, ready to go. God is faithful. Amen. So welcome to Good Shepherd. If this is your first time here, we say welcome. We're so glad you're here. At this time, we are going to release our kids' church to go on up to kids' church. So if you have children, you can send them to kids' church now. So we do have a lot of exciting things coming up here at Good Shepherd. And uh, here in just a few moments, we will be receiving our tithe and offering. This is an extended part of our worship when we can come together and give to the Lord. You know, we're tithing that 20, uh, we're fasting that 21 days of prayer and fasting, and that's giving our first to God. And when we come together on Sundays, we're giving our first to Him as well, that 10% in our tithing. And so there's several ways you can give. You can text the word GIVE to 502 822-2001. There's also envelopes in the seats behind you, and you can grab one of those. You can put your check or your cash in there. So we just want to thank you for your generosity and thank you for your giving. Every week we are serving more and more people in our food pantry, and so we're very thankful for your giving. And so we will be taking that up in just a few minutes, but we do have several opportunities for prayer throughout these 21 days of prayer and fasting. And one of those, I really want you to take the opportunity to join us on a Wednesday. We have been having a wonderful time of intercessory prayer for our nation, our city, our family, and we are coming together at 6.30 to 7.30 for a time of corporate prayer, and it has been powerful. So if you've not been able to make it, come join us for that this Wednesday. And then Saturdays, Miss Carolyn is opening up the sanctuary for a personal time of prayer from 11 to noon, so several times that you can take opportunity for that time of prayer and next Sunday everyone say next Sunday next Sunday is our miracle service prayer uh, service and I am so excited uh, brother Trent would you come up here for a second I want you to share with the congregation today uh, many of you have met Trent and Janice they have been um, our Sunday school teachers when we were 15 they're our friends and the Lord's just using them in a mighty way and they are here a part of our church here today and we're so thankful for them but the Lord had opened up an opportunity for him to go and speak at another church and he saw miracles happen last week or last night sorry and this next Sunday he is going to be preaching during that miracle service so you be inviting your friends and family but I want you to share the testimony of the man with his hearing hallelujah we had a, a great service at Faith Worship Center in Bardstown and uh, as I was ministering around the altar I called a, a gentleman out and his wife and they came up and and I looked at him and I began to speak to him and he was going huh and I was like and I would say it a little bit louder and he'd go he'd just lean over his ear and and I looked at his wife and I said can he not hear me and she said no he, he can't hear and I was like oh okay so I just grabbed him by the head and I put my fingers and I said father Jesus put his fingers in people's ears and they popped open and I pray in the name of Jesus they pop open and I just let go of his of his ears and I looked at him, I said, what about now? And he said, well, I can hear you now. And I was like, well, hallelujah. But God is so good. You know, if you come expecting a miracle, a miracle can happen. But you have to have it in, in, in that spot of knowing what you want. You know, be specific. Don't, don't, just, don't just come up and say, I just need prayer. You know, come up and be specific. If you need a miracle in your finances and your body, I believe in my heart of hearts that God's going to do something next week. God's going to heal, deliver, and set free. Bring those that need a healing. Bring those that need set free. Bring those that aren't saved.
that maybe are drug addicted or maybe depression or anxiety because I believe God is going to begin to break that stuff off in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much. So come expecting. Isn't God good? Can we just give the Lord a clap of praise today? He's so faithful. And you know, one thing I know about the Lord is he is no respecter of persons. So what he did for that gentleman last night, he wants to do for others. Amen. He's a God of miracles. So come expecting. It's going to be wonderful. All right, Alec, if you're ready to help lead us in this declaration for our tithe, let's all stand to our feet this morning as we prepare our offering to give. Alec, would you leave us in that please. Lord Jesus, I come to your house not empty handed, but bringing my tithes and offerings according to Malachi 3 10. The windows of heaven are open to me, lest the fear be poured out that I cannot contain and the powers rebuke for my sake. This year is a continuation of the Jubilee blessing. By faith, I have a better job, promotion, raises, bonuses, and benefits, business opportunities, sales, and commission. Lord bless this offering and everyone here in Jesus name. Amen. guys leading us into the presence of God. Isn't God good? I'm so grateful. How many of you feel grateful today? You know, you sing about the greatness of God, that means we ought to be grateful. And I just think of his goodness. I remember probably 20 years ago, I kept having a pattern of losing my voice, and I went to the ENT, and he said, you're just not going to be able to sing during worship. I said, no, that's not going to stop me from singing during worship. If I have to get a dry erase board and, and write the words up here, I'm going to praise and honor the Lord. Amen? I just feel grateful. Thank you guys so much for being here. We got message that some couldn't make it with the weather, but I'm glad that you are here in the presence of God. I want us to look this morning at Acts chapter 12, and uh, we're going to start there. I'm so proud of you guys for fasting and praying. And uh, we talked last week about chopping down one tree apiece. And I thought it was awesome to come in, and one fell. God just knocked one down with a storm. And uh, thank you to Russ for chopping it up and moving it out and clearing that out. And so uh, God is just so good. And so uh, we're going to talk about somebody giving a million dollars today, and just the Lord just do it and pay it off. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Uh, I do think, and I, I think I found a great opportunity for first-time guests I believe it's a great opportunity for you to invite. We're going to start giving every first-time guest a dozen eggs on Sunday. Wouldn't that be awesome? I believe attendance will double next week, and so I want you to come. I need some of our, our chicken folk around here that have, <laughs> have their chicken. We're going to uh, partner together so we can reach people for Jesus. Amen? We are in the middle of this fast, and I want to, I'm going to begin first in 1 John 5. Uh, 14 and 15 before we go to Acts chapter 12 and I want to pray father we thank you for your Holy Spirit you are already here you're having your way you're speaking to us God I pray that you would help me speak the already anointed word of God change our life today we submit and surrender to you God and we ask God for you to have your way in Jesus mighty name everybody said amen praise God how many know that fasting accelerates what God wants to do 
in our lives, and we need to recognize that, and we need to understand that. All around the world, we are having advancements in technology. We're having advancements in cars. We're having advancements in computers. We're having advancements in medicine. How many of you can see that? How many of that we ought to advance in the spirit realm as well? And many times we feel like we've been stuck in a, a season. We've been stuck in a rut. And someone once said that a rut is just a grave with the end kicked out. And we need to get out of that rut. And that happens by the Spirit of God. And we need His Holy Spirit. And when we fast and pray, things begin to happen. I believe when you fast 21 days, I think you're making an advancement in the spirit realm 21 years. Because things can begin to happen. Things that you prayed for for years can begin to happen in the spirit realm as you prepare yourself and position yourself to draw near to God. It's not about manipulating God, but I, am, I want to get into place well, where the glory comes out. I want to get in, in that place with God that I can draw close to Him. And as we fast and pray, it accelerates what God wants to do in your life well, when you submit and surrender to Him and we get our flesh under control and we give it to God. Uh, it also gives us great boldness when we fast and pray. I'm proud of my daughter Sophie. She witnessed to a homeless man this, this week and she went and stopped and got a coffee and the Lord said, hey, I want you to stop and give the homeless man a cup of coffee. And she shared that with him and he went over to the parking lot next door and she began to give him the coffee and said, can I say a prayer for you? I want you to know that God loves you. I want you to know God loves you. He said, can I pray for you? She got her anointing oil out and prayed for him and he began to talk about the things of God and he gave his heart to Jesus right there in a the parking lot. And that's what I'm talking about. Something happens when we fast and pray. Supernatural things happen. Things that doesn't look like it. In the natural, it doesn't make sense. In the natural, it doesn't add up. But God can do a great work when we submit our lives to Him. But I want you to know this morning that God hears your prayer. Before we go to Acts chapter 12, I want to begin with this in 1 John 5, verse 14 and 15. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. Now, this is the confidence that we have in Him. My confidence is not in a politician. My, my confidence is not in the government. My confidence is not in winning the Powerball. My confidence is in Him, that we put our faith and we put our trust in Him. Man will let you down. The Bible says some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we're going to trust in the name of our God. Amen? Now, this is the confidence that we have in Him. So there ought to be some boldness when you already know who won. When you already know the outcome, there is confidence. Now, this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything, anything, say anything, but it's got to be according to His will, He hears us. I want you to know that God hears your prayers this morning. Maybe you're fasting and praying, and I don't see answers. It seems like uh, I'm feeling worse, or maybe my, my kids are acting crazier the more I pray for them. I want you to know that God hears your prayers and God is going to work on our behalf. Don't give up now. Some of you wonder, say, well, God, do you, are you actually going to do anything? God is working things out on your behalf. There are, there are messes that people got their lives into and sometimes it takes time for God to untangle some of the mess that our family members have gotten themselves into and God has to humble them. God has to do a work in them and I pray that God would open the eyes of our loved ones before they hit rock bottom. And I've had people say, so, well, I just pray my, my kids hit rock bottom and they wake up. I pray that they open their eyes before they hit rock bottom. How many know that they don't have to have an accident? They don't have to have surgery before God can wake them up, but God can speak to their lives and turn them around. Amen? It says that He hears us. Let's go back to that. If we ask according to His will, and sometimes we just attach that on our prayer, God, if it be Thy will, when we really don't believe. How many know it is God's will for healing? It is God's will for salvation. 
It is God's will for deliverance. It is God's will for provision. It is God's will for revival in our city and our church. So let's not take the easy way out and say, well, if it be thy will, we're going to be healed. If it be thy will, no, it is God's will. And you need to know the word of God and say, hey, this is what the word says, and I'm standing on the word. It's in the will. Tell your neighbor it's in the will. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. I want you to see that, that we can have confidence that God hears our prayers, that God's timing is not our timing. Just like we're watching football season and God's timing is about like football season. The game can say it's got five minutes to go, and my wife has learned that means about 30 to 40 minutes is still left on the clock. And some of us, we have our own ways, and we have our own timing. I really believe God answers every prayer. He hears you, and he answers every prayer. And sometimes God says no, and we don't like that sometimes. When you're out of the will of God, God will say no. When you're in rebellion, God will say no. When the time is not right, God will say no. And that's just a part of us fasting and praying that we are positioning them. Hey, I'm going to get right. I don't want myself to be the hindrance to the miracle. And so there's times that God says, hey, this is not the job for you. We've all had jobs. You had relationships. And I thank God for unanswered prayer. That you prayed and God said, nope, that's not the one. Nope, that's not the job. Don't do that. Don't buy that house. Don't buy that car. And the most headache we've had when we went against that voice, when God said no and we decided to go anyways. So God answers sometimes with a no. Sometimes God says slow. It's not that the thing's wrong. It's not that the job's wrong, but the timing's not right. And there may be seasons in your life God said, hey, I want you to slow down on this. Don't get ahead of God. Amen? And so there's times God says no, and there's times God says slow, and I think God, sometimes God says go. God said, hey, there's the green light. You prayed about this house. You prayed about this relationship. You prayed about this car. You prayed about this opportunity, and I want you to go. Here is a green light, praise God. And so we need to be open to God speaking to our hearts and changing our lives. I want us to look this morning at Acts chapter 12 as we get into this. Here we have in Acts chapter 12, we're talking about fasting and praying. And here in Acts chapter 12, the Bible talks about that Herod was on the hunt. And Herod had killed James. And now Herod had arrested Peter and had thrown Peter into the prison. And it was a holiday. And so he wasn't going to kill Peter on the holiday. He said, I'm going to give you the weekend, and then we're going to set this thing up. And I love this, that the Bible says, but the church prayed. But constant prayer was offered to God. And so what are we going to do? Now, here was somebody that, that as a believer, they didn't stop praying when they lost a loved one. They didn't give up on God. They didn't backslide when God didn't answer the prayer like he thought they would answer the prayer. I'm in the right place, right? And we have to be okay with that. Well, this is not the way I I thought it would work out. This is not the way that I thought it would all happen. If it's all about you, it's not about God. And so we got to pray for God's kingdom to come this morning. I want us to look at this. And I've had people backslide because a saint didn't receive a miracle how many know you can't base your experience on anybody else's experience you can't base your faith i know saints that are 80 and 90 years old and served god for 70 years and still died with cancer and people say, well, why would I serve a God that this dear saint lived for god and was a holy righteous woman and god never healed him Why would I serve God? Because we have an anchor in the storm. I have an anchor in the storm in the middle of everything tossing around me. I have an anchor in Jesus. And so we need to remember that. Don't base your faith on somebody else's experience, but base it upon what the Word of God says. The Word of God says, by your stripes I am healed. 
I don't understand why we've lost loved ones. I don't understand why we had to lose best mother. Uh, we don't understand why Don and Doris went to be with Jesus. We don't understand things that have happened in our lives, but we're still going to have faith and trust in God. What would they want us to do? Uh, we're going to have faith in the same God they had faith in. The Bible says there were people of faith in the hall of faith, that they had faith in God and did not receive the promises yet. So I'm still going to keep on. I'm not going to give up. Somebody else may get distracted. Somebody else may get off track. But hey, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to live for God. My faith is in God. That's what best mother would have wanted for her kids and grandkids to serve God and put faith in God. She died of cancer, but God is still on the throne. Jesus is bigger than cancer. Jesus is bigger than COVID. Amen. Don't base your relationship on God with what happened with a saint. Here was a saint. Here was James. He, was, he died at the hand of Herod. And so what did they do? Did they backslide? No, they went back to prayer. I'm going back and I'm going to seek the face of God. I'm going to give God all. Notice what it says in verse number 5. Here it is. Verse number 5, it says, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. The church didn't stop praying because someone died. The church didn't stop believing because somebody passed away, another leader. But no, they, they stood up and said, we're not going to let it happen to another leader. The devil tries to come, steal, kill, and destroy but hey, it ain't going to happen on my watch anymore. We're going to fast and we're going to pray. Sister Mary got cancer, but praise the Lord. But constant prayer was offered to God. Jimmy lost his job, but constant prayer was offered to God. So and them were going through a, a marriage trouble, about to get divorced, but constant prayer was offered to God. What are we going to do? We're going to have constant prayer and we're going to offer it to God. The Bible says in Acts chapter 12, it said that Herod had stretched out his hand. And it says here in 5, that word constant in the Greek means a stretched out prayer. And I love that, that the enemy can stretch out his hand to come to kill, steal, and destroy, but the church stretched out in prayer. The devil can try all his schemes and all his wicked plans, but I praise God, God has a plan, and we read the back of the book, and we, won, we win. I'm going to be stretched out in prayer. When was the last time you were stretched out in prayer? When was the last time you laid out before God and said, God, I'm not leaving this place until I get the peace of Jesus? Now we just come, let's do a little drive-by prayer. Let's do a little drive-by service. Let's just get in and get out and go to the restaurant and do our grocery shopping. we got a whole day already planned. Praise the Lord. But when was the last time you stretched out in prayer? God, my kids need a miracle. God, my grandkids need a miracle. God, we need some direction. We need some answers. And I love that word that Beth shared. He said, when you're pulled from every direction, there's peace when you pray. And some of you are pulled in every direction, and that's a sign that you need to pray. Well, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know who to marry. I don't know whether to take the job. Pray about it before you do anything. Amen? But it says it's stretched out prayer. What are we going to do? They didn't protest, they didn't boycott, they didn't gossip, they prayed. What do we know to do? We're going to pray, we're going to seek God, we're going to believe God, that the hand of God was on the man of God, the hand of God was on his church, and we have to build the kingdom of God. Notice what it says, that constant prayer was offered up to God, not to the universe. I wasn't trying to manifest something. I wasn't sending out vibes into the universe. He said, no, I'm praying to the creator of heaven and earth. I'm praying to my heavenly father, and some of us have a problem with that. You've got daddy issues, and you need to get healing from that. You need to give that to God. The Bible says that God, Jesus said, I'll send my spirit that you will not be orphans. Your daddy left you. Your mom and dad, they neglected you, but you have a heavenly father that will never leave you or forsake you, praise the Lord. There's something on the inside. There's a spirit that bears witness with my spirit. 
that I have a father that will never leave us. You're not an orphan. An orphan doesn't have anybody to go to, but the Bible says we've been adopted in to the family of God through Jesus Christ, that Jesus hung on the cross of Calvary and rose on the third day that we could have eternal life and we could have new life today, praise God. I'm a part of a family now. Some of you have no family here, but you've got a family of choice. Hey, I choose to be a part of the church, uh, the family of God. You can't choose where you were born and who your parents were. But I can choose being a part of the family of God. But it says that constant prayer was prayed to God for him. It wasn't just a generic prayer. Oh, Lord, just bless Peter, Lord. Oh, Lord, if it be thy will, uh, comfort his family, Lord, and take care of the kids, take care of all that. But it was prayed for him. They were believing God for miracles, friends. Let's stop praying little Mickey Mouse prayers and let's get right with God and ask God for the what if. What if God answers this miracle? What if God answers this prayer? The devil lies to you and says, well, what if you lose your job? And what if you lose your health? What if you lose your insurance? What if you lose your spouse? And what if, what if, what if? What if we turn that around and say, what if God answers this prayer and God blesses the church, put a million, we can pay this church off, build a gym? What if we started praying those kinds of prayers? What if? Man, what if, if if God just blessed us and we could buy the property behind us uh, over there on the mesa? What if? It doesn't always have to be fear-based. It could be love-based. I'm not an orphan. Woo, it's love-based. I have a Heavenly Father that loves me, so why wouldn't I ask Him? I have confidence in Him. But constant prayer was offered to him by the church. By the church. They prayed specifically for him. And some of you say, well, Pastor, I don't see anything happening. You know, we've been fasting, praying. We're on day 14. Some of you, this is day 21. Some of it's day 28, whatever you're at. Just keep on going. But sometimes we say, well, Pastor, I don't see anything changing. Did the church see anything changing when there was miracles happening for Peter? There's things happening that you don't even see. There's things happening and you're not even aware of it in the spirit realm. That you only see with your natural eyes. And I want to encourage you, there are things happening behind closed doors that you know nothing about. There are conversations happening for your good and for God that you, oh, I feel that right now, that you have no clue about. Woo! Don't base it upon what you see with your natural eye, but you got to know that you know that you know. Woo! And notice what happened. The church prayed, and Peter's in prison the day before he was going to be executed. How many remember the, how nervous you were before you the first day of school? First day you went on, the next day you're going on a vacation. You got to fly out in the morning. You can't sleep at all hardly. And what was Peter doing? Snoring in tongues. How in the world can Peter pray and have peace and sleep in the middle of a prison chained to two men? The Bible says there were squads, four squads of four. There were 16 men and men, and they would be on rotation four at a time. They would be chained to two, and two would guard the door. And you imagine how much faith and trust would you have to have in God that you could go down and, and go to sleep. People say, man, I'd like to be able to sleep like a baby. I don't know any baby that sleeps throughout the night. Babies are whimpering and crying and and fussing and want your passy and want, want more milk but I want to get to the place where I can sleep like Peter that he could sleep in the boat that he could be praying with Jesus and fall asleep and Jesus that could you not pray for one hour and here he is in prison he's sleeping like a log what happened somebody was praying for him number two so he had a promise from God And some of us have promises from God that we ought to be able to rest in him. The Bible says, Jesus said, Peter, upon this faith, I'm going to build my church. That he wasn't going to build it upon 
Peter physically, but it was upon the faith that Peter had. And so, therefore, he had a promise for God. What do you mean? You're going to build your church and I'm going to die here uh, just days, months, weeks, months later? Let me look at John 21, 18. John 21, 18. Go ahead and you can turn over there just for a minute. This will make somebody happy just for a minute. John 21, 18 says, This was Jesus, and you know the story in John 21 if you don't look it up. And Jesus had went through the whole, the whole dissertation about, you know, if you love me, feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my lambs. And notice this promise of what Jesus said to Peter. I will tell you the truth. When you were young, you were able to do as you liked. You dressed yourself and whenever you wanted to go. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others will dress you and take you where you don't want to go. Do you see that? He had a word from Jesus that you're going to live to be old. <laughs> so what do I have to worry about? Hey, I got it on good authority. The King of kings and Lord of lords said, I'm going to live to an old age. <laughs> and so some of you need to get a word. You need to get a promise. You have a promise from God, and you're in the middle of all this mess and chaos and all the craziness of this world. And, and the devil said, what are you going to do now? I, I'm going to sleep because I have a promise from God. Some of you need to go back and dig up the prophecies and the promises and say, God, this is what you said. That you were going to be an author, that you were going to have a podcast, that you were going to uh, help the homeless, whatever that promise is, that your kids were going to be in church, that you were going to be totally healed and set free, that you were going to be debt free, that you could build the kingdom of God, that you were going to retire in an early age, that you could help serve the church and reach our community. So where's the promise at? And I want to encourage you as we pray, get out the promises. Say, God, this is what you said. Some of you have had prophecies and words from other people even when you were young kids, and I want you to know, get them back out. Because in the middle of your prison of life, you can just lay there and sleep at peace. Because I got a promise. How many of we trust Jesus? If I trust Jesus with my eternity, why wouldn't, he tr what, wouldn't, I, why wouldn't I trust him tomorrow? I'm going to trust him with attorney. Why can't I trust him with my bills or with my kids or with my grandkids, with our health? Why wouldn't I trust him with that? We used to sing that song, I Am a Promise, with the capital P. I'm not going to sing it, but Beth used to sing it to our kids. Now we sing it to Lincoln, and I want you to know that you are the promise. <laughs> you are the promise. Somebody's grandparents prayed for you. Your parents prayed for you, and you are the promise that they prayed for, and no hell or high water is going to be able to take you out, and so we need to have faith in God. Hey, amen? Some of you need a word and a promise for God that you can hang on to. So, so what are you hanging on to? We're hanging on to Facebook. We're hanging on to CNN and Fox News. And we're consumed with that when we need to go back to the word, and we need to go back to the promise. I'm hanging on to this. My confession of faith. But some of you need a word from God. It will change your life. Beth, come here real quick. Leave that there and I'll, I'll share that. I want to share a story with our friends. I'll let you do this, explain, but it goes right along with it. Yes. Um, just during COVID, when COVID had first started, you know, everything was shutting down. And um, then I asked Jason if this was okay, and he's always okay with me to share the story. And so it was during COVID, and Jason works for a very well-known airline, and all the airlines had shut down, and they weren't needing pilots, and that's what he does is he flies people to destinations. And there was a, a time that they came back to him and said, listen, we, you are more than likely going to have to be furloughed. And they had a certain day that they had to send out a letter to let them know. First of all, they said there's a possibility that you are going to be furloughed, that you're going to lose your job. And they were like, we're just working out everything, looking and seeing what's going to happen. And so 
<clears throat> but the church prayed, and we were all praying and believing God that Jason was not going to lose his job. And one, one night I had a dream. It was the first thing in the morning. I had a dream. And in my dream, I had a dream that um, the Lord was saying that Jason's job was safe and secure. And those were the words. And I woke up and I told Josh, and he said, you need to let Jason and Ashley know this is going to encourage them. And so, well, that was scary for me because the airline was saying that Jason was going to lose his job. But I had a dream that the Lord was saying his job was safe and secure. And he said, now, either you're going to be obedient or they're not going to be encouraged. So you're going to be obedient. I was like, oh, that's my pastor right there. I was like, okay. So <clears throat> I called Ashley up. I was so nervous about it. I called Ashley up. I was like, Ashley, you can do with this whatever you want. I remember going in my bathroom. God didn't want no one else to hear it. I was like, you can do with it whatever you want, Ashley. But I had a dream, and I know it was from the Lord, and it was June the 25th. I write, because I write those things down. I keep track of them. And so I wrote it down in my notes, and it was June the 25th. I said, I had a dream, and the Lord said that Jason's job is safe and secure. I said, so do with that whatever you want. So that was June the 25th. We were praying every single day. All of us were praying and praying and believing God. And on August the 28th, he re don't show that yet. <clears throat> now, August the 28th, 2020, listen, this is me and him trying to share a story together. So August the 28th, 2020, so June 25th, I had a dream. His job was safe and secure. So we're all declaring, Lord, his job is safe and secure. August the 28th, he received a letter, and that's the letter you're holding there. He received a letter, and it stated that it was, um, I'll read some of it. I had, I had to put my glasses on. Hold on. <laughs> I got bifocals. Hold on. Okay, listen. So it says that it is, um, you know, that they regret to say that they were going to have to furlough him on November the 30th. It says, your last day of work will be November the 29th, 2020. And he received that notice August the 28th, and I had the dream June the 25th, two months before. So here we had that this job was going to be safe and secure. August we get this letter that, he gets this letter, that uh, no, that's not what they're saying. They're saying his last day is going to be November. And I remember thinking oh gosh you know I told them this is what the Lord said but it's it's like that scripture that you walk by faith and not by sight and it's when you get those words that you have to hold on to them and here's the thing too <clears throat> you're going to receive words for your friends and your family as you're praying for them and so as they're going through this very trying time it's up to you to come beside them and use your faith too and so we linked aside Jason and Ashley. And I remember he would come every Wednesday and serve in the food pantry because he couldn't go to work. And he would come and he would serve in that food pantry. And I, we would see him and I would say, have you heard anything? This is what they're saying. And I would say, but you know what, Jason? Your job is safe and secure. And we were declaring that and believing God, his job is going to be safe and secure. And in, in reality, the letter says, no, uh, your job's going to end on November 29th. But the Lord gave it even ahead of time so that, he, that we knew that, you know, we're going to still believe the Lord, that God's going to do this. And so even though it didn't look like it was going to happen, God had given a word to them, a word of encouragement. No, no, your job is safe and secure. And so then, <clears throat> in my notes, I have that his job was supposed to end in November. October, he received word that his job was safe and secure. Amen. Isn't God so faithful? So, and then, and I loved it because this is like, yes, I have a letter of a furlough letter. And I, and it was so good because Jason, you, you don't under, even understand what this means now for me, because, you know, we're believing for specific things right now. And, and I, I know that the Lord had given me a word, a promise for uh, my family, and I haven't seen it happen yet. And I've gotten a little discouraged, if I'm honest with you guys. I've become a little discouraged about it. And, and I know what the Lord said to me. I know when I, where I was and what he said. And I know that I still have to hold on to it. But the uh, last little bit's been a little 
little discouraging for me, if I'm honest. But Jason came to me when it was all said and done, and he gave me that letter, and it was framed. And he said, now, I'm going to give this to you. So when there's moments that you wonder that you hear from the Lord or not, he said, this is a reminder that you hear from the Lord and that you know what the Lord says. And so, Jason, I was getting that out last night, and the Lord just reminded me, here's your reminder that you did hear what I promised for your family, and you still got to grab a hold of it. So those of you that are believing things that the Lord's promised for you and, and you're standing on that, it may seem like it's not happened yet and it may seem like the total opposite is going on right now. I just want to encourage you to put your faith in the Lord that you do know how to hear the voice of God. The Bible says that my sheep know how to hear my voice and you know how to grab a hold of the word of God and you know how to hear him and to hold on to that promise. So let that be encouraged. Amen. Let's give the Lord glory. Amen. And the good news is what God does for one, he can do for others. Our God is not a respecter of persons. And so that can intimidate you or that can motivate your faith. That for what God does for one, he can do for others if we put him first and trust in him. And I love this. Here was Peter asleep in the prison. People were praying for him, but most importantly, he had a promise from God. And so I want to challenge you to get your promises back out. So this is what I'm standing on. This is what the word, we received words and prophecies and dreams. This church has received prophecies that there were going to be wheelchairs and crutches lining the walls. The altars were going to be filled. Hey, and we're standing on that word. Yes, the last couple of years looked tough, but we made it by the grace of God. Amen. Our bills have been prayed. Thank you, Jesus. God is building his church every day. Amen. And we hang on to those dreams and prophecies and promises from God. Don't look in your natural eyes, but you got to see in the spirit realm, amen? And I'm thinking about the, the prophet who told his servant, he said, man, we're surrounded. He said, I want you to look up a little higher because there are angels uh, surrounding our enemies, praise the Lord. And some of you, the enemy says that he's got you surrounded, but God has you surrounded this morning, and God is protecting you. And notice what happens. Here was Peter in verse number 7. And all of a sudden, I love this, that an angel showed up on the scene. Here he was, sleeping like a log, in the middle of prison, chained to two men, and the angel shows up and kind of smacks him. Hey, wake up. you got to be sleeping pretty good uh, to be at the light shines on you. How many of you got to have a total blacked out room? It's got to be, the fan's got to be going, praise the Lord. Temperature's got to be at 68 just so you can get to sleep. But here he was, he's in the prison, chained to two men, and all of a sudden the light shines down, the angel's there, and he's still just snoring in tongues. That's some peace. And the angel kind of pokes him there and says, I want you to get up. He said, I want you to rise up quickly. He said, I want you to rise up quickly. And he got up and the chains fell off, praise God. As we are praying for our families and loved ones, let me know when we trust God and they have a promise from God, the chains can fall off. I thank God that the chains can fall off. And notice what the angel said, I want you to get dressed. He got up and he got dressed. And notice what it says in verse number 8. He says, follow me. And Peter followed him. And he goes up to the gate. And all of a sudden, the, the gate begins to open up. The, the gates are motion activated. Some of us are praying and believing God some, for some things. And some of us, we need to have some uh, action in our life. Some feet on our prayer. It's motion activated that as we take a step of faith that God blesses us. Look at verse number 12, <clears throat> Acts 12, 12 through 16. We're going to finish this. And so when he considered this, he came to the house of Mary. He thought he was having a vision, and all of a sudden he came to himself. He said, what in the world just happened? I was in prison, about to be persecuted and killed, and all of a sudden I'm set free. So where did he go? The Waffle House. No, he went to the prayer meeting. So when you get a miracle, where are you going to return to? I'm returning back to the house of God so I can give God glory. Amen? Amen. I'm going to come back and give God praise. I'm going to come back and give a testimony. Notice what happens in verse number 12. And so when he considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark. And they were gathered together having tea. They were gathered together gossiping. No, it says they were gathered together, still praying, praise God. 
And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. And when she recognized Peter's voice because of her gladness, she did not open the gate. But ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. And they said to her, you're beside yourself. You're crazy. How many of us, we wouldn't even know what an answer looks like? That we're praying prayers and we don't even know what our miracle looks like. And the miracle could be uh, at the door. Tell your neighbor the miracle's at the door. The miracle is at the door, and you need to recognize that and understand it. And here they are. They're going to have a debate about angels. And I wonder if we're not too busy debating on Facebook and we miss the miracles of God. We're too busy talking about other churches and other Christians and other politicians, and we miss the miracles of God. The miracle was at the door. And so they go to the door, and the Bible says they were astonished. And I think we need to practice our astonished face. Just go ahead and when you go home, not right now, don't scare nobody. But some of you need to rehearse when the kids come to church and, and lay down on the altar and give their heart and life to Jesus. When God heals your body, you weren't able to walk, but all of a sudden you get some movement in your knees. You're going to have to practice your astonished face when God does his thing. I want you to think about how are we going to act. And, and again, God's given us a promise. He's given us a promise, and his credit is good. He said it. It's on the way. So what are we going to do? Are we going to sit here? Well, yes, we're going to keep praying, but I'm going to watch and pray. I'm going to start looking for the miracles. I'm going to start looking for the healings and the breakthroughs and the blessings. I'm going to start being a witness to those around me. Praise God, because God is doing miracles. What are you looking for? You're looking for the stock market to crash. You're looking for Joe Biden to find another piece of classified stuff. That's all we're looking at. Let's get back into the Word and say, I'm looking for a miracle, God. I'm looking for a healing. I'm looking for a breakthrough. I'm looking for revival. I'm looking for that million-dollar check to come into Good Shepherd. We can pay off the debt and, and build a gym. Pray. I'm looking for it. Are you even looking for it? What are you looking for? I'm not looking for a rainbow with a pot of gold at the end. I'm looking for breakthroughs and miracles in the name of Jesus. So why wouldn't we pray? Why wouldn't we pray? Let me give you three things real quick. Sometimes it's just fear. Some of you don't pray because of fear. You're afraid, what if God doesn't answer? What if, what if you look like a failure? Some of us, it's unrepented sin in our life, and you need to get right with God. Some of you don't pray because of sin in your heart, and you need to repent and get right with God, and He will bless you. He will turn your life around when you get right with Him. You're not going to know peace until you make peace with God. Until you accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, you are going to be miserable, and some of you have enough God just to be miserable. You know what to do, and it's time that God turns your life around. God changed my life when I sold out to him one day. At first assembly, God, I made a decision. I'm selling out to God. I'm going all in on this thing. I'm putting my faith and trust in him. And some of you need to come out of sin and step out into faith and give your heart and your life to Jesus. Be a rebel and serve God. Be a rebel and be on fire for God. Anybody can go the way of the world. Any. Everybody can do what everybody's doing on TikTok, but we are people of faith, amen? I'm going to be a rebel. Here's the third thing. Sometimes it's just pride. Sometimes we're too prideful to pray. It's hard sometimes that, hey, I need prayer. The kids are acting a fool. I don't feel good. And I remember there's been times that God's given me words, and uh, I've had a word, hey, God's speaking to somebody right now. He wants to heal you of a, a migraine, and somebody wouldn't come forward. And they come after service, and said, it was me. It was me. I needed a prayer. And we began to pray, and they went home and had migraine for a week, all because they were too prideful to respond at the moment. So when the Spirit is hitting and the Spirit is moving, be be in faith. Don't wait till we go out into the parking lot and say, hey, would you pray for me? No, when the Spirit of God is moving, have faith in God. Step out and believe God. But God hears your prayers, and he's wanting to do miracles. A couple years before Beth's mother passed away, 
I'm talking about pride here, and I'm going to be real for just a moment. And I don't want to say this to gross anybody out or be crude or ugly, but about a couple years before her mom died of cancer, she was in a hospital. She was having bad, in a bad shape. And one day the doctor called us and said, you know, this is the diagnosis of Beth's mom, Kathy. They said, but we do have an answer. They said, this thing called a fecal replacement procedure, transplant, fecal <laughs> replacement transplant. And some of you know what that is. And uh, we knew what that was because we saw it on the good doctor two weeks before that. <laughs> I never heard that. How many of those things you see on the good doctor says, is that really real? And so it was a show, and it had the guy, uh, the young guy, and <laughs> some of you know, and it was a deal. And I'm embarrassed to say this, but I feel like I'm supposed to say this for some reason. They said, here's what I want you to do, because the good doctor said, I want you to take your fecal matter out of Beth, put it in a, a tube, and inject it into her mother, in her colon. She wanted to go. <laughs> do you know how crazy that sounds? <laughs> Who was the first guy that ever came up with that? <laughs> hey, I, got a, I have an idea. Let's take what's in me, and I'll inject it into you. It might just work. We tried everything else. Who was that guy? I want to know. <laughs> we'll go to Google. We're going to find that. Post, somebody post that in the group, the private group. Again, I'm not saying that to be crude, but I want you to think about that, how crazy that sounds. But you know what? We humbled ourselves and did it. And it saved her life. So she got an extra year or two out of life. As crazy and as far. <laughs> but guess what? We humbled ourselves. If this is going to save her life, I'll do whatever it takes. So why do we get embarrassed when we talk about fasting and praying? That a good doctor can come up as something as far brain as, as that when we don't trust the great physician. And the great physician says that when we fast and pray, this kind comes out. The door is open when we fast and pray, and some of us need to get it beyond ourselves. Beth had to humble herself and get beyond her own self, say, I'm going to do this for the sake of my mother. And the doctor said it spared her life. Are there things of faith that God is asking us, steps of faith, that we can reach our family and we say, I'm just too embarrassed to do that. I, I would be ashamed to talk to them about Jesus. Hey, it's not that outlandish. I want you to think about that. That we do, there's, you could go throughout your life, things that you've done at the hospital and tests you've had ran and, and, and all this stuff has happened to you and said, that don't even make sense, but I'm going to do it because I trust my doctor. Do we not trust the great physician? Say, God, I believe in you for miracles, so I want you to pray, repent of your sin, and give Jesus your life. Let go of pride and let go of fear, and let's trust God for miracles. Get a hold of a word from God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Right now, speak to our hearts, God. I pray that you would stir up those promises. Stir up the promises of God in our life. Remind us of the dreams. Remind us of the visions. Remind us of the prophecies. Remind us of the word. That way, when everything else is going haywire around us, God, I've got a word from God. I've got a dream. I've got a vision. I've got a plan from God. Thank you, Lord. Some of you even have prophecies when you were 10 and under. You went to a church service and somebody gave you a word from God. That wasn't for nothing. And you need to go back to this and say, God, I thank you. The devil's in my ear and lying, what if this and what if that? But what if God 
does a miracle and the prophecies come true? What if God does his thing? Woo! That ought to get somebody excited. That ought to give you a little bit of expectation right now. And I want to encourage you, even when you don't see your prayers on the way, there, God hears your prayers this morning. I have confidence in him this morning. Lord, right now, right now, Lord, remind us, God, of the promise. Peter had a promise that he's going to live to an old age, praise God. What are your promises today? God sent his son that we don't have to be orphans. God sent his spirit that we would not be alone. He said, I don't want you to be orphans. Don't think like an orphan, but think of a heavenly father that loves you. That God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son just for you, just for me, that we can have eternal life. Thank you, Lord, right now. Thank you, Lord, right now. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I know people are watching online this week. Maybe some of you need to share this word with a family member. But if you're here today and say, Pastor, I, I don't have peace with God. I'm not right with God. I've, I've walked away from God. didn't walk away from you. You've walked away from God. And Pastor, I'm not right with God. I got hate in my heart. I got bitterness in my heart. I got unforgiveness in my heart, and I need to give it to God today. Maybe you're in this place, and you've never repented of your sin. You never, never put your faith in Jesus Christ. This is an opportunity today. This is the biggest miracle we could have if you give your heart and life to Jesus this morning. But if you're here today, would you just wave at me? Just, just wave at me, Pastor. I want to make things right with God. I know people are watching online. I just want to make, you can do it right there in the house. You can do it right there in the truck, wherever you're watching from. Right, right now, we're going to make things right with God. Would you just wave at me just for a moment? Okay, everybody in here looks like you're right with God. I want to pray for those that are watching online. Would you stand this morning right now? Say, Father, forgive me for living life my own way. I believe that Jesus Christ lived, died, and rose again on the third day, giving me new life and eternal life today. Forgive me, Lord. Help me, God. Live for you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just thank him for it. Lord, I thank you that we are forgiven. I thank you, Lord, right now that we can have the peace of God. I just feel compelled just for a moment that we're going to stretch out before the Lord. I want you to, if that's sitting at your seat, if that's coming to an altar, some of you may need to lay on the floor. Some of you just need to take a moment and pray that we're going to be constant in prayer. We're going to be stretched out in prayer. We're going to be stretched out in prayer. I want to open these altars for a moment. Mickey, if you'd sing that one time. Let's sing this just for a moment. And just find the peace of God. Pastor, you don't know what's going on. We're going to give it to God this morning. We're not going to give up. We're not going to get out until we receive his presence and his peace. I feel Jesus. He's Hey.
My soul does burn within me. I feel Jesus in this place. Come on, just be obedient to the Lord here. The Lord leads you to pray for somebody, pray for him there for a moment. Nothing stirring this morning.
just get in a holy huddle there for a moment. Turn around, those your family, and maybe those nearby. Just grab a hand. Some of you guys get together. Come on, family, get together just for a minute. Just begin to pray. How many know that you not only have promises, but those around you have promises? Come on, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your grace and mercy, Lord, right now. Pray in the Spirit. Oh, we thank you for the precious promises, God. Your promises are our armor and protection, Lord. Oh, la da 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 Come on, pray for your family just for a minute. Come on, pray. Woo, something's happening. I want you to dust off the promises. Some of you need to dust off the prophecies. Some of you need to dust off the words. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> Some of you had a hard time sleeping and you need to get out the promises. <laughs> Some of you had anxiety and you need to get out the promises. <laughs> Something's happening. Lord, we just worship you, Lord, right now. We just worship you right now. say the last couple of weeks and just even more now that he's redeeming the time if there's somebody be here that felt like you've lost time whether you've lost time with I don't know in whatever area you feel like you've lost time I just hear him over and over saying I am redeeming the time I am redeeming the time and what you thought were your best days before that God is going to do an even greater now that you've not seen your better days yet, that it's not already past, but he's going to bring forth even greater days. And the times that you thought you were blessed before, he said he's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon his people that you cannot even contain. So right now the Lord's one encouraging you that he's redeeming your time. He's redeeming the time and that he is going to pour out even more blessings, even more blessings, and that whatever you've been believing him for, he is going to do that. That's a promise for somebody. You can hold on to that. So, Pastor, I don't have nothing to hold on to. There's your word right there. Hold on to that. I want you to come around here in a moment if you want to turn off the camera or whatever. I want to take a moment. There are people that believe in for miracles. Again, we're getting ready for our miracle service next Sunday. Bring somebody. Bring somebody. You go buy a dozen eggs and bring them. Say, so when you get a dozen eggs, you come to church. But I want you to come. We're going to extend our faith and pray. There's people that need miracles. What are we going to do? The constant prayer was offered up by the church. Will we stretch out over these just for a moment? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Get in there, Janice. Get in there, guys. Put your hands on them just for a minute. Oh, la da 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 Glory, glory. There's some miracles in the house. Miracles knocking on the door. Shh. Woo. Miracles knocking on the door. Shh. Woo. Glory, glory, glory. Shh. Oh, la da 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 da
feel Jesus. Anybody you want special prayer this morning? He's here. We're in no hurry. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. Something's stirring this morning. Something's breaking. I feel Jesus. Miracles are at the door. Answer the door. Woo. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. Miracles are at the door. You gonna answer the door? Jesus. Are you gonna answer the door? Or do you want me to get it? Anybody else you want special prayer this morning? Something stirring. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Linda, would you have faith? You girls, come on. Lisa, come here. Kim, come on, come on. Janice, come on up here. Come on, ladies. Burn within me. Needs a healing in her body, Lord. Come and just lay your hand. Get them stirred up. Come on. I feel Jesus. My soul does burn within me. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus in this place for my soul. Soul does 
things burn within me. I feel Jesus. Feel my Jesus in this My soul, for my very soul, does burn within. My soul does burn. 